Hello there, Boots Owen here. I recently found this interesting piece of kit. It's a 220 volt circuit breaker from a UK type supply, normal AC supply. It takes the power in from the main supplier, from your electricity distribution supplier, and then has two big circuit breakers and splits it out that would go straight into your meter. And then from your meter, it would go on to your consumer unit within the house where you'd have various fuses and whatnot. But there's something in here that splits this cable up and I want to take a look at it. First of all, let's have a look. It's a Aeroflex Fluvent Hopes Patents. It says something else here. The property of MECD. So I've got a feeling now this is getting up on 70 years old. Got a couple of patent numbers there on the back. 291518, 365591, 335550 patents. I guess if we look them up, we'd find something. And you've got two indicators there that are meant to have the phase color, but there's no color stuck on them. On the bottom, quite interestingly, We've got a big timber plug and a timber kind of grommet here, which I've never seen before. Typically though, however, the backing plates in the UK to older main supplies and consumer units wear timber, so I'm not surprised the timber's there. And the unit itself is Bakelite or some other kind of proprietary product. So if we look in here, you can see the main contacts, and they're just some kind of an alloy of brass or copper silver in colour. So there's one of the breakers and I don't know that it's a fuse because it's just a massive piece of pipe in there. It may be a 100 amp fuse or something along those lines but I do believe it's just a circuit breaker rather than rather than a fuse otherwise it would have a rating you'd imagine on it. It just says the same Hope's patent Aeroflex Fluvent type AFS unless AFS is something that I don't know about because it's so old that it's obsolete. But these are typically in houses like the house I live in which is about 140 odd years old now. My neighbours have one of these. Uh, I have a more modern unit that was fitted by the electricity company because this is the property of the electricity company and so is the meter. Beyond the meter it becomes my responsibility. So the consumer unit is my issue. But the neighbours still have one of these. But I do still have this type of old lead coated cores coming in. So let's break this apart and have a look. It's held together with four fasteners but they are badly corroded so I have a feeling this is going to be a one-way trip in here. What's quite likely is that if I could get a screwdriver in I could twist it and then they might shear which would be something. So this one needs a little tappy tap tap to free it up and I have a feeling that's going to be first and last tappy tap tap but it may just break it. Carefuling. Yeah, that was that one done. Okay. Yeah. Weird, weird stuff. Okay, so if we have a look here, just before I go in, you can see this black sticky stuff, which I presume is coal tar. Yeah, and a sniff gives the smell. So that smells like uh, old coal tar soap, or it smells like old road tar, or something like that. That's a smell that is supposed to give you cancer. Not good stuff, they wouldn't use this anymore, but it's been used as a potting compound in this in this enclosure. So, ooh yeah, look at that. Ah, look, and this, that's got some of that resin on as well. So this is a filling spout here, so that you can top up the enclosure, which is pretty cool, I guess. The good thing about being in a cold environment is that this just fractures rather than kind of sticks like gum. Okay, so that's why they have a plug in it. And I guess timber is an insulator and that works just fine. So you've got your timber plug there, that stops the stuff coming out. And this timber gasket's just become fractured now, but it has another timber gasket on the inside there. Or not gasket, grommet even on the inside. So let's keep going. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, this is just, it's just becoming a bit of a mess now. So I don't think... I'm going to be able to recover anything more other than to say that these cores in here just fork and split and go to these two connectors. So coal tar being what it is, if you find it on a road job in the lower layers of a pavement in the UK, it's classed as a hazardous material. They don't use it anymore in road building in the UK because of these uh, carcinogenic properties. These, that's got, that, that's, it's gone right up in there. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's got some kind of paper or something on it. Come on, copper, out you come. There we go. Yeah, so it's covered in a bit of paper there as well. So we have a look at this cable as well. It's pretty good. So anyways, if they find this uh, coal tire in the asphalt, it becomes a hazard because it's a hazardous material. And what happens then is that they've got to use it uh, either as a type of fill that they can cover so that they can kind of like bury it in a dump in the road 
or they've got to transport it. And once they transport this stuff, once they take it off site, it becomes a hazardous material. And construction companies love it because normally they've priced priced heavy on hazardous materials and they're going to make a fortune from it. You know, that's 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 how builders make money. So typically the client on the road job will hope that they can just overlay it with more layers of asphalt. And if they put more asphalt over the top, it locks it in. It's not hazardous, it's just in situ, doesn't leach out or anything like that. It just stays stays where it is, stays put, or so we think for now, um, until, until some water course somewhere gets ruined. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. So what they've done here actually is quite quite interesting. They've got the copper cores coming in to the splitter. Well, they've split the copper cores coming into the little circuit breakers here. Not circuit breakers. Well, they are circuit breakers because you have to pull them out and you break the circuit. Um, they've tinned the edges with some solder to kind of hold them together. I've not seen that before. It's quite a quite a neat little job, that. Pretty good. Um, I don't want to tap this anymore, so I'm guessing from the looks of that, the lead comes up somewhere about to there. you got that lead-lined copper stuff. Pretty cool. You know, it's not something you'd use nowadays. There'll be a plastic. There'll be a plastic for that. PVC or some kind of rubber or something like that would take care of that, but you don't see that much anymore. Those are just modern cables. That's the kind of PVC coating. you got the black and the red there for the phase and the neutral or live or line or neutral or whatever you want to call it and then that's the old housing over here is the circuit breaker itself so yeah we can see on that if we give it a bit of a give it a bit of rub it's copper inside copper is good we like copper let's take this apart because it has been in a damp cellar and the wood the wood screws that were holding this unit to the backing plate were completely corroded Let's get in there, let's get these things off and see if we can consider this a fuse. Now I wouldn't consider that a fuse, I think you're going to have to... What's that made out of? So I don't know if that's a fuse, but it takes some amount of electricity to burn that out. Like typically the kind of fuses they have on houses now are 80 or 100 amps, and that that's it's going to take many, many more amps to burn that out. But let's see. See the magnet isn't sticking to it, so it's not a ferrous metal. Scraping it down there, it looks like it might be brass plated. Yeah, it looks to me to be plated brass. Pretty neat all the same. Yeah, pretty neat. And those we think are copper. Yeah, they look pretty sure they're copper. Copper, screws and nuts, okay. And then in here, I'm guessing these connectors. Yep, that looks like copper as well. So that's pretty. Pretty heavy duty that, you know, it's a big contactor to take that that there. That's that's what makes and breaks it. Not nothing particularly different to what we have nowadays. It's probably just brass now so that you don't have to have the two layers. I wonder is that brass? It looks to be. It might in fact be brass inside with a copper a copper coating and then a tinning on top of that. So if you know what it is, leave the comments below. And also if you know what this might be, like I really don't think that's a fuse. I think it's just a joining piece that's a heavier, a heavier size, heavier surface area than the than the cable that's going into it. But that's typical of what you get in an old in an old English house. Thanks for watching. Maybe you've learned something. Have a look at my other videos. There's a lot of nonsense in there. I've taken apart an old gas meter as well. That might satisfy somebody. Let's have another sniff of this stuff, eh? Yeah, that's not good for you. That's not good for you. You have to heat that up, you know. You have to boil that up in in a pot. Probably in the in the cellar on a little gas like a little gas flame. They do that and they pour it in. There was a blanket plug on this side as well, but that's some kind of a cardboard or some kind of a what's that? Can't break it, so it's pretty good, but it does bend. Yeah, but it's not timber. Looks to be a piece of oak, that. Just looking at it. Kind of rough turned. Probably blasted out of the machine. Yep, thanks for watching. See you later.